Welcome back to Fast Market on the TD Ameritrade Network. I'm Tom White, joined by my co-host, Kevin Hinks. But let's bring in our next guest for our cash tag segment. That's going to be Megan Brantley, the Vice President of Research at Likefolio. Thanks for being here, Megan. Thanks for having me, guys. All right. I, I've avoided the Swan Brothers so far this week. Uh, <laughs> it's been a bonus for me, uh, Megan. But we're talking Amazon. You know, everybody talks about Amazon as being a retailer. They've got a lot of competition. Their margins are really thin there. They're led by the cloud business. But what kind of uh, sentiment data are you guys seeing out of Likefolio? Yeah, so whenever we look at Amazon, I think that to kick off, you know, I have to point out that our data definitely does skew to the more consumer facing side of things. So things like Amazon Prime and Prime Video, um, you know, and those mentions are typically where consumers are going to talk about the most, where we're going to pick up the most chatter. And in these spaces, we're starting to see a little bit stress just on the Amazon Prime brand in particular. And I think what it is, is it's not of a sense of it's not growing, it's that that, that growth is slowing down. So these are mentions from consumers who are talking about really signing up for that Amazon Prime um, service and you know joining and starting to use Amazon Prime. And you can see this enormous uptick in 2020 at the onset of the pandemic, which is not surprising. And then since then, things have started to taper down. Part of that is due to just in general, you know, e-commerce starting to slow a bit comparatively whenever you look at the growth rate that we recorded, obviously, during the pandemic. But then also this, this concept of Competition is competent. You know, the Walmarts and the Targets of the world can now provide consumers with nearly the same service as Amazon, except for they have such a wide, um, you know, retail presence that consumers can pick up things even same day if they want in many times. And so we're starting to see some competition there. In addition, we did see Amazon raise the price of their Prime membership um, in the last quarter. So I think that that increased by about $20 a year, give or take. And we are starting to see some signs of just, you know, these compounding factors of, you know, consumers have other options. Now the price, it costs more to have a Prime membership and even some execution issues. You know, some mentions of people who are talking about late packages or just, you know, not experiencing that standard that Amazon set start to weigh on happiness a little bit. So the Amazon Prime brand's happiness um, rating is down by about three points year over year. So I do think that that's interesting to watch moving forward just because we are sort of seeing the slowdown in growth for this consumer facing prime side of Amazon's business. But then on the flip side, whenever we look at Amazon's cloud business, you know, we are tracking AWS, Amazon Web Services, and we see those mentions and those that demand increasing on a year over year basis. We see that segment doing really well. I think the, you know, mentions of consumers who are signing up for or using some part of those AWS services have increased by about 13% year over year. In contrast, we see Microsoft Azure you know, their cloud um, service in mentions, those have actually fallen on a year over year basis. So we're seeing Amazon outperforming when it comes to cloud, but we're seeing some underperformance when it comes to their retail sector. I have a couple of things to talk about, Megan, because this is such a massive company and it's almost <laughs> like, don't you feel as a trader like you're getting a head fake? Everyone wants to talk about retail, but retail's not where they make most of their money. They make most of their money in AWS. So my question to you is, if I'm looking at Amazon as a long-term trade, I'm probably not looking at retail like I used to when it was in its early stages. I'm looking at AWS and I'm looking at uh, digital advertising and things like that, places where they can grow. The question I have, and I've used this with Andy before in some, some points with some names, who's going to be the winner? Who's winning in terms of AWS and Azure and, and Google Cloud? Who's winning and who's gaining and, lo and losing in this fight? Because I think that's where the, the future of all these companies are, right? It's, the, it's right there. It's the, it's the cloud and it's the digital spend. Yeah, I think that, you know, the from our perspective, at least that cloud portion is a bright spot for Amazon. So I think that that's really important. I will say it's it's a lower portion of our mention volume for sure, but it is still significant. It's still robust enough for us to get a good measure. And we see consumers who are using Amazon's um, AWS service. I know that internally, you know, like Folio, we use AWS. Um, those happiness mentions are really high. Those mentions, I believe, are around 84% positive. Just to give a comparison stake for, you know, the percent happiness 
this for, for example, it's prime services. Those are around 72% positive. So that's, you know, a 12 point shift, 84% is really high, especially whenever you're considering, considering a service offering. Um, I do think it's important too, that we're seeing momentum in Amazon's AWS services. Those demand mentions as onboarding mentions are up by about 13% year over year. In contrast, you know, I checked Microsoft Azure just um, before I came on the show and I was, I was looking at that demand and those kind of, you know, that momentum from consumers and those have dropped by about 10% year over year. So I think in that sense, um, you know, Amazon is definitely outperforming there versus some other cloud peers. But as you mentioned, you know, this, this cloud space is growing across the board. So perhaps, you know, Amazon has a bit of an edge there that we're watching, but I also think, you know, just to kind of transition, we are watching some developments from Amazon that tell us from a long-term perspective, it's making some really interesting moves in the retail space. You know, previously we've come on the show and we often compare Amazon to Shopify, at least in that retail sense, because Shopify has really been chipping away at this lead that Amazon had established. You know, I think in the fourth quarter of 2021, um, you know, it was released that Shopify merchants moved around half of the gross merchandise volume that Amazon's marketplace moved. And in 2018, this ratio was less than a quarter. So Shopify has really been making inroads, inroads when it comes to this third party mar marketplace concept, enabling these companies to to reach consumers directly. And so last week, Amazon came out and they announced this buy with Prime feature. So what that will allow people to do is merchants can now utilize Amazon's Prime's, Prime's logistics services, um, you know, even if they're even if they're not necessarily on Amazon, directly from their site. And that'll also enable consumers to be able to check out with Amazon. So I think that these are these are interesting moves that Amazon realizes, okay, you know, we need to figure out a way to attract these small to medium sized businesses back on our team and also improve the overall experience for consumers. So while this isn't underway yet, that announcement I think was really significant. And for us is another sign that, you know, long term Amazon, Amazon gets it and it's starting to make some changes where it needs to. Yeah, that uh, that point kind of, uh, you know, is what I wanted to discuss, uh, Megan, because you're seeing that uh, purchase intent versus sentiment falling about 10 percent for Amazon. It's really high and uh, up to the right on the scatter plot for yeah. Shopify. But that's what they do. They disrupt businesses. And now that we're getting through the supply chain issues as far as getting, uh, you know, product out there, Amazon starting this, would you expect this to to turn uh, pretty considerably because, you know, they've got more eyes on their platform. This will help their uh, revenue as far as digital advertising moving forward. So this will only help Amazon once they release this. And do you expect uh, a lot of these metrics to turn around as far as the retail side? Yeah, this is the one scatter plot that we're going to have a really, really close eye on because Shopify has been performing so well. And as you mentioned, it's in that upper right hand quadrant of that scatter plot, which in our universe at Life Folio, that's where you want to be. And the, you know, Shopify consumers or, or users are really happy. Consumers who are using Shopify to check out and pay for things are really happy. So it makes sense that Amazon would want to, you know, create a service so that its own users can leverage the same you know, benefits and technology and things like that. So definitely keep a close eye on these two. I know that right now um, we, we're we recording significantly higher momentum for Shopify across the board versus Amazon. Whenever we, you know, out pre combine all of the different brands and products and things underneath Amazon's umbrella and look at the momentum on a big picture and holistic scale, even though it's not earnings, our signal right now is about a five. So that tells us, you know, it's positive, but it's still technically neutral in our world. Um, the bright spot being AWS, but definitely the part that's really lagging and that slowdown in growth is that consumer facing side. So this could really start to shift in Amazon's favor if if um, businesses and, you know, these small to medium sized businesses start adopting this and start moving away from Shopify. And this might actually be the first time whenever, you know, Shopify has some competent competition, you know, it's being, it's used to being the disruptor and now potentially it could be disrupted and, you know, we'll see, we'll definitely be keeping a close watch as this feature unrolls, but that's kind of where our head's at now is that, okay, you know, some sides of Amazon's business are slowing down um, like this consumer facing, you know, retail side, but then that's AWS service looks really, really strong. Yeah, and uh, I think uh, Shopify investors are taking heed of that warning moving forward. That stock's down 68% so far just this year, hitting 52-week lows in today's session. All right, great stuff as always, Megan. Have a good day.
Thanks, guys. You too. All right, Kev. So relatively